So we're in the shed today and we're going to be fitting up this ARB air locker. Now I've had this sitting in the corner of the shed for probably over a year now and just haven't got around to putting it in. So on the Christmas break, we're going to be fitting it up. i got Dad here today helping me to fit it. So I haven't even looked in this box since I bought it. So I hope it's the right locker. tiny it's the size of my hand compared to the land cruiser diff we got there this is a little baby one i do have this this is a spare rear center i have it's i reckon it's the easiest way to do it you fit the locker in this center and then you can swap it straight in your car that way your car's not on jack stands for ages while you do your diff Damaged it there a little bit, so Dad just ran the file over it. Which it's fine now.
you'll have to tighten that vice. There's a lock tight going off. Huh? I only just put new shoes in last week, so it's a good time to check them anyway. Now to pull the axle out, there's just the four bolts on the back, which it's pretty straightforward. Just take off these two brake lines, the four bolts, and it'll come straight out. If you're careful enough, you can pull the axle out without pulling that backing plate out. So we'll see how we do. Now to pull the axle, pull the axle out, I normally just stick the drum on backwards, give it a few yanks. Don't be afraid to hit it, because like that, that's a lot tighter than the other one I've done, but I probably should have drained the diff oil first, but it'll be all right. Good time to check your bearings too. Mine aren't that old, so that's all right. But and see, we did, backing plate did come off, so we'll have to clean all that silicon in there and we'll have to clean all that and re-put gasket maker in there and I'm not going to pull these backing plates off till I go to put it all together because I put 
this with the suspension kit, the longer brake line here is actually a braided line, so you can't clamp it. Normally I'd clamp it so when you pull off this brake line, it doesn't just drip brake fluid everywhere, so. And I don't have another um, rear wheel cylinder that I can just screw on just to stop it from leaking for now, so. I'll wait till I put it back together and I'll quickly pull it off clean one. I'll do one side at a time and that way I won't lose all my brake fluid. I'll quickly drain the oil before I do the other side. Still nice and clean, which is good. I'm not gonna bin that, that can that can be used for something else. That's still good oil. I won't use it in my new locker, but for something else that needs gear oil, that'd be perfect for. I'll just let that drain for a bit. Whoever had the car before me, each one of these nuts is different. It shits me. I really should just get four that are the same. That way you don't have to have 10 different sockets. Sometimes they'll wear a big lip in the drum here which makes them pretty hard to get off. You'll either have to back the shoes off or back the handbrake off. So. Same thing again, we'll just wedge out the axle. Just to break that silicon seal. She's not playing ball this one, is she? It's also a good time to check your rear wheel cylinders, which is this part here. You just pop the rubber open and just have a look in there. And if you can see in there, I'm not sure if you can. If it's dry, they're still good. If they're crook, you'll know, because there's brake fluid. The seals are crook in here, so you obviously need to replace it. But what I'm going to do is just pull the master cylinder off and then I'll put it back on the brake line so it doesn't drip. So I can at least take these backing plates off and start cleaning them up. There we have it. That's just on there finger tight just to stop it from leaking. At least I can clean up all this gasket maker, get it ready for reassembly. Now to get these shoes off, I just like to use side cutters. You'll see this, you just gotta turn it into the slot. And if you if the whole thing keep wanna keep turning, you'll see the little pins are in the back. That one's even got a little bit you can hold into. 
so it's pretty simple. See, just like that. And there's the little slot. And that's literally all that hold the shoes in. Same with this one. Just like that. You just got to remember, sometimes even take a photo or do one side first so you can go to the other side and check the springs are in the right spot. But this spring you just sit aside, you know that goes at the bottom. That way it'll come off. And this is obviously our handbrake cable here. So we just fr flip him over. Pull this spring back out of the way. And there you have it. Done. And when you put these back together, you just, because these are self-adjusting, you just set them all the way in. So when you press your brake pedal and pull your handbrake up, it'll set itself. So we'll just sit them off to the side for the minute. And see, we can start, we've got good access here now. You don't have to do all this, I like to do it, just, you don't want to put it all together and one bit of silicon's not stuck or oil's upset it and then it starts leaking so you have to pull it all back off again. You can see I've cleaned up both sides. Just want to make sure you rub your finger around. There's no lumps that's going to hold it out from sealing, which there's not. I did clean, I used a wire wheel because there's a bit of rust here as you can you can see a bit of pitting, so I'll put a bit of black paint on both sides just to stop it from rusting and and yeah. But I'll do the same to the other side. I won't video it because no one wants to see that. That's just boring cleaning crap. So I've got both ends of the housing all cleaned up. That one as well. Just put some rags over it just so no crap gets in there and now I'll pull the center out. I'll have to get a big chisel. I can't get enough swing under there to hit it, hit the chisel. Plus there's limited room. So I'm just gonna cut a wedge on the end of this. And it's quite long, so I'll be able to stick it right in there and hopefully that'll be enough to get it out.
something simple like that, just a wedge. And I'll give you a tip when you're grinding stuff. Make sure you got the good smiley socks and thongs on. They give you extra grinding power. Beautiful. They stuck a lot of gasket maker on here. I don't know why they would put so bloody much on. They must have knew I was buying it so they'd make it hard to get off. Well, there it is, it's out. I'll have to have a name for this, the Suzuki Diff Wedger Outer 5000. That worked a treat. I'll wipe all the bottom out in the housing first, clean it all up, because no doubt there'll be some material in there. So I'm going to start putting the airline down the car. So this is the airline that comes with the locker. And I picked up some conduit yesterday, which I'll put over it just to protect it. Now I've already got the compressor in the car, which it's it's the old model ARB compressor. I got it off mark, uh, Facebook Marketplace for 25 bucks. With all the wiring, it actually came with two solenoids, but I gave one to a mate. And yeah, it works fine for 25 bucks. I thought it was a good deal. And I've already got the switches in, which are just here. And the compressor one's here. And let's see, it's already all working. And it's already all wired up. So you can hear that. There's only one solenoid, that's why that one. But. All I gotta do is run the hose and it's done. These are no good for pumping up tires. Like they're absolute rubbish. I put this air fitting on and I've got a hose under my seat like for emergencies, but for airing down and up, like they're just utter useless. You're better off to get like a big portable one or something like that. So I'm gonna have to run it right down behind there to keep away from the exhaust here.
All right, that should be enough just to get down to the bottom for the minute. So it turns out the older and newer solenoids, the fitting in the end is different. Hopefully the plugs are the same, I'll just swap the whole solenoid I suppose. Well there's the newer solenoid. Plugs look the same, hopefully they're wired the same. We'll find out. The kit, well, the kit that the locker came in and all that doesn't have an elbow. So this is either going to have to face up for now and I'll get an elbow or... So I had to search through the shed and I found a 90. It's a 6 mil 90. So I'll put that on now. I'm not sure if this can take pressure though because it's four... I'm pretty, I'm thinking it came with the diff breather kit, that's what this is. Because it's the same fitting as those anyway, plus it's a 6mm hose, so I'll put it on and just see how it goes. So there it is, I did want it under the pressure switch there, but it's just, this pose doesn't flex too well, so it's just going to have to go like that. Looks kind of messy because there's obviously this hose here and hoses going everywhere, but it's just going to have to be like that, I think. So I've already gone ahead and ran the airline through, I've just cable tied it along the brake line, all the way along. I'm not sure how it's going to end at this end, so I've just left it long and once I've got the centre back in and I'll have to work out, I'll have to have the suspension at full travel down or full droop, that way I can set the length on my um, airline because you don't want it too short because obviously if the go to full droop when you're out full driving it's just going to rip the airline out so I'll just leave it long for now and once it's all back together I'll just check that. We want between 0.1 and 0.2. So it's just over 0.01. It's 0.012. Yep. Turn it or wiggle it. 
I didn't think it needed that much pressure. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I did. So I got it all back together. I didn't video putting it back together. I thought there was no point because you saw me take it all apart. But it's all back together, brakes are bled, there's oil in the diff. I've ran the locker line. I will show you. This is where I ended up running the locker line up and in between here. I did leave, like I can even pull it off. Like there's heaps of length on it. I didn't have anything high enough and I, the forklift's bogged down the backyard so I can't even get that. I reckon that line will be plenty long enough, so I'm going out in the bush in two days time, so it'll be a good test for it then, but everything's back together. And um, we'll just do a quick test to make sure it all works. So firstly, we'll turn the compressor on. It's quite a noisy compressor, especially when you're sitting in the car with the door closed. So that's locker off. You can see they're both spinning the opposite way. And that's locker on. All right, I'll turn it off again. So that's all done. I've been waiting about a year to do that. I literally bought it over a year ago. It was last January when ARB had their deal on lockers. So, I'm super happy that's in. Now I'm going out in two days time up to Alice track, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.